Hello, and thank you all so much for joining me today as we explore the new features of the NumWorks Graphing Calculator. My name is Nick Koberstein, and I'm a math teacher in residence at NumWorks. I'm very excited to dig into the new and updated applications coming out with version 19. This summer, the NumWorks Calculator got even better with the release of several new and highly anticipated features. There are a lot of new features and improvements in our three statistics-related applications. Our statistics app now has two additional graphical representations along with improvements to the data in summary statistics tabs. Within the regression application, it is now possible to display a simple scatter plot before adding a regression model as well as easily generating a residual plot. For those working with inference, our significance test and confidence intervals now include new visuals on the final screen. There are also lots of new features outside of the statistics-related apps, including support for lists, new shortcuts, and the ability to change the color of a graph, and more. Let's take a look by starting with the statistics application. When you first open the statistics application, you'll notice that there are now only three tabs at the top of the screen, data, graph, and stats. We have combined the histogram and box tabs into a single graph tab and introduced two new graphing options. We'll explore those in just a moment. Within the data tab, we enter our data just as before. You'll notice that I've already entered some values into my first data table. We can open the column options by navigating up to V1 and clicking OK. Notice there is now a cumulative frequencies option. If we toggle this on, a third column will appear for this table showing those cumulative frequencies. Now let's take a look at some graphs. We can navigate up to the Graph tab and click OK. Notice that we now have four graphical representations to choose from. Let's start with histograms. You may notice the visual is slightly different. There used to be a single pixel gap between each bin. This is no longer the case. We've also corrected the notation of the interval using brackets and parentheses. You may have also obtained graphs with the bin widths of 0.5 when you would expect a bin width of 1. This is now fixed. Let's take a look at box plots. We've improved the graphic here so that it's easier to read where the cursor is. Notice the two yellow arrows. We have also added support for outliers which will automatically be displayed. If you don't want to show the outliers, you can change that in the settings. Going back to our list of graphs, you'll notice we have two new graphs. The first is the cumulative relative frequency graph. Notice that we can navigate through each data point and determine the percent of values less than or equal to a given value. Finally, we also have the normal probability plot. This is great for those stats classes where students need to assess normality. We'll now take a quick look at the Stats tab. You may notice that the list of summary statistics has been reordered. We now start with the five number summary and then include the mean, standard deviation, and variance for both the population and the sample. Going back to the Data tab, I want to mention a few other options within the Column options. One of the improved options is the Fill with Formula tool. Let's add another data list to V2 using a formula. To do this, we'll open the column options for V2 and select Fill with a Formula. Before, we were only able to reference other columns within the statistics application. Now it is possible to create a list using a new list features. Let's try it out. We see a few templates here that we can choose from. The first template will generate a list of integers from 1 to an indicated upper bound. 10 is shown in the example, but we can choose any upper bound. The next template uses the random function to randomly generate numbers between 0 and 1. Again, we can select how many numbers to generate. Then we have a template that will fill our table with the values of the natural log of k, where k varies from 1 to an upper bound. These are not the only functions we can choose, though. We can replace natural log of k with any function or expression we'd like. So for example, k squared or sine of k. Finally, the last template demonstrates that we can still reference other columns within the app. In fact, we can even reference columns in the regression app or other lists defined elsewhere. Let's use the first template to generate a list of integers from 1 to 8. 
For the frequency, we'll again use our column options to create a formula. This time we'll use the random template, but let's change it to random int from 1 to 20 using the toolbox. As before, when we return to the graph, we'll see distributions for both datasets. However, it is now possible to hide a dataset in the Graphs tab. Let's hide our first data table by going back to the Data tab and opening the column options for the first data table. We will now toggle off the Show in Graph and Stats option. Notice this table is now grayed out. If we return to the Graph tab, we'll see that only one data set is represented. Moving on to the regression application, as a reminder, the regression application is great for two variable data sets. Similar to the statistics app, you'll notice that there are three tabs at the top when you first open the application. In the data tab, I have already entered a data set. The regression application has been revised so that when you go to the graph tab, the first thing that is displayed is a scatter plot. This provides the opportunity to view the data before applying a regression model. Depending on the observed trend, you can then add a regression model by simply pressing OK or by selecting the regression item under the tab bar. We've added two new regression models the exponential model of the form y equals a times b to the x, as well as the median-median model. Once a model is selected, the regression model will appear on the graph. Now you can navigate through the data points using the left and right arrows, and even navigate either up or down to the model to observe the predicted values indicated by y hat. Once on the model, the equation of the model will also appear. You might notice that the graph legend has been minimized to allow for more space for visualization. All regression information is now accessible in the regression menu under the tab bar or by simply pressing OK. Here you can change the model and view the regression equation. You can even use the copy key, shift var, to copy the equation and later paste it into another application like the Grapher app. You can also view the value of R squared and for linear regressions you'll find both R squared and R in the stats tab. One of my favorite new features is the residual plot. By simply pressing OK you'll receive the residual plot and can navigate through the data points to view the value and its residual. Predictions are still available, but we have renamed them to make them a bit more clear. You can now predict y given x, or find x given a predicted y value. Just like with the statistics app, a data set can be created using formulas and lists, and data sets can also be turned off so that they are not viewable in the graph and stats tab. Both of those would be available in the column options. On the stats tab, you'll notice that the sample standard deviation has been added, as well as symbols for each component. The inference app has some exciting new visuals and improved functionality. A few things to note within the probability section. First, we've updated some of the names to match what is expected. For example, the student's distribution is now called the student's T distribution. In fact, the T distribution has been improved to allow you to use an inverse operation when working with that middle area. For example, if we create a t-distribution with degrees of freedom 11 and change to the middle area, we can now enter a probability. This was previously not an option. Significance tests now showcase a new visual on the conclusion screen for easy comparison of the p-value and alpha. We can take a look at this by using the two proportions option. We'll use all the default values for our example. Do notice that we now report the pooled proportion within our calculated values. Then on the final screen, you can see the z-test statistic and the p-value in yellow, but we now illustrate alpha or the rejection region for easy comparison. And for cases where the two values are very similar, you can use the plus key to zoom in. Returning to the main inference screen, 
we also note that there is a new visual for confidence intervals. This time we'll select one proportion and again use all the default values. On the final screen we see the point estimate and margin of error at the very bottom. Above this we do see a number line with the endpoints of our interval marked and in yellow we see our 95% confidence interval. Above and below we can easily compare this interval to a higher and lower confidence level. We have also added support for inference on the slope. When performing inference on the slope, you'll notice that the test will pull the data set from the regression application using the values in X1 and Y1. If no values have been entered, they can be inputted directly within the test, and you can also clear out a data set if needed. Finally, chi-squared tests for homogeneity and independence now calculate the contributions to the chi-squared value. We'll enter a few example data points and then find these contribution values in the same screen as the expected values by switching to the Contributions tab. We previewed this slightly within the statistics application, but the calculator is now able to manage the lists as accessible objects. All the lists you have created are available in the var key menu, and lists of data sets in the statistics and regression application are also available in this menu and accessible in other applications. We'll use the calculation application to define a new list. To define a new list, we'll use the curly braces, which are obtained using shift log. You will also find them in the toolbox under lists. Let's create a new list. We separate each element with a comma. It may be helpful to store this list using the arrow key, and I'll call this list capital L. Now we can call an element using parentheses. Do note that in all lists, the index of the first element is one. So for example, L of three gives us the third element of list L, which is seven. We can add a value to each element of our list. And we can even add the elements of two lists together if they are the same size. There are also list operations and statistics within the toolbox. We can determine the length, minimum, and maximum values of the list, sort the list, and find the sum and product of the elements of the list. Going back and looking in statistics, you'll see that we can calculate the mean, standard deviation, sample standard deviation, median, and variance of a list. For the statistics functions, it may be important to note that two parameters can be used, a list of values and a list of frequencies. If no second parameter is used, we will assume the frequency is 1. So for example, evaluating the mean of V1 with frequency N1 will give us the same mean we saw in the stats app. Instead of creating a list manually, you can also generate a list from a function similar to in the statistics application. When we select this option, we first input a function, for example, K squared, and then an upper bound. Let's use 12 we now have a list of perfect squares. There are just a few things left to mention about version 19. When performing calculations, you can now use the percent sign. Let's assume a $50 item was on sale for 10% off. We could compute this in three ways. First, we could compute 90% of 50. That percent sign is found as the alpha option of the backspace key or we could compute 50 minus 10% of 50. Finally, because the NumWorks calculator is intuitive, you can find that sale price by simply computing 50 minus 10%, which will assume 10% of 50. When working with units, additional results now provide two reference values, one larger and one smaller. For example, if we have a result of 100 feet and we open the additional results, we learn that 100 feet is 45% of the width of a soccer stadium and 17 times the height of Einstein. These reference values can be found for all types of units. While we are in the calculation application, let's also discuss a shortcut that was created. You may have noticed that you can perform running computations. That is, once you perform a calculation, 
you can continue to perform calculations using just an operation key. So for example, we can take this previous result and multiply by 2 by simply hitting the multiplication key and 2. However, since the NumWorks calculator has only one negative key, pressing the minus key will assume you're entering a negative number. If instead you would like to subtract from your previous output, you can now just press the minus key once again. Now the screen will show answer minus, allowing you to subtract a value. Speaking of shortcuts, the home screen now features shortcuts to the applications. On the home screen, you can of course select an application by using the arrow keys to highlight an application and pressing OK to open the application. But instead of using the arrow keys, you can also now use numbered shortcuts to access those apps. So for example, pressing 3 will move your selection to the third application, the solver, and pressing 9 will move your selection to the ninth application, settings. Pressing a number twice will open the application. So for example, pressing 2 will move me to the grapher, pressing 2 again will open the grapher. The last thing I'll mention is right here within the grapher application, it is now possible to change the color of a graph. When we add a function, the color is automatically assigned, and the colors on the expression tab will match the color of the graph on the graph tab. We can change the color of the graph back on that expressions tab. If we navigate to the three dots to the right of the expression and click OK, we can select color and choose the color we'd like. The expressions tab in graph will now display the selected color. To learn more about version 19, simply head to numworks.com. Under the calculator tab, you'll find an update page. Here you'll find all the information about version 19 and any other software versions from our history. You'll also have access to update your calculator and of course use our online emulator as well. Thank you so much for joining me as we talked about the new features of version 19. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out.